everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm gonna show you the dreadful explanation of the metabolic alkalosis chloride responsive versus chloride unresponsive and all these stuff so let's get started with a question we got an 18 year old woman who's brought to the er due to weakness fatigue and dizziness her blood pressure is normal, heart rate, she's a bit tachycardic, normal respirations. And now let's look at the labs. Now, being tachycardic may reflect hypovolemia, but we still don't know yet. The labs here show a normal sodium, as you can see, it's normal. Potassium is low, so she's hypokalemic. Chloride is low, normally it's from 95 to 105. So that's obviously hypochloremic. Her bicarbonate is really high and the pH is high as well. Normally it's 7.35 to 7.45. So that's obviously above 7.45. So this woman is having metabolic alkalosis plus hypokalemia and hypochloremia, all right? And that really happens in the setting of volume depletion. This patient is volume depleted, all right? Now, let's take a look at the urine electrolytes. Whenever there is a case of metabolic alkalosis, the next step is always to perform urine chloride testing. And I'm gonna tell you why that's important. Now, urine chloride turns out to be low, which proves her volume depleted state. We have low chloride in serum, therefore we have low chloride in urine, right? And her sodium in urine is also low. And the fact we have low urine sodium reflects there is a state of a lot of aldosterone, because aldosterone leads to sodium reabsorption into the blood, decreasing urine sodium. And why does this woman have a lot of aldosterone? That's in response to the hypovolemia. Hypovolemia activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to promote sodium and water reabsorption and euvolemia. And so why do we always link metabolic alkalosis to urine chloride? That's what I'm going to tell you before answering this question, guys, because chloride absorption is dependent on bicarbonate. Here is chloride getting reabsorbed at the beta intercalated cell of the distal tubule and it gets all the way into the blood. In order for this step to happen, in order for chloride to get reabsorbed, there must be a lot of it down there in urine and filtered out from the glomerulus. Here is the glomerulus. If there is a lot of chloride filtered out here into the urine. It will get reabsorbed in exchange for bicarbonate. So we're gonna get rid of bicarbonate. That's because this cell, the beta intercalated cell, forms carbonic acid which then splits into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions get reabsorbed as HCl. So now we have HCl in blood. And then the bicarbonate gets lost in urine and excreted. Now, that means that if we do not have enough chloride going down, filtered into the tubules, we wouldn't be able to get rid of the bicarbonate. And so when there is a chloride depleted state, when we are in chloride depletion, that means we wouldn't be able to get rid of bicarbonate. And that means we're, we're gonna stay in a state of alkalosis for really long until we provide chloride. And that's what usually happens with states that get rid of or that lose chloride. Chloride losing states characterized by low chloride in urine. Why is it low in urine? Because it's already depleted in plasma. 
where it's under 20, that means there is a sort a source of depletion, whether it's because we lost it from the stomach, that's GI loss of HCL in vomiting, for example, or we lost it in urine because of excessive diuretic use, where we lost a lot of chloride. In these cases where the cause of metabolic alkalosis is a result of chloride depletion, those are the cases that will respond to chloride repletion, obviously. And so this is the case that we call saline responsive. It's not about saline per se, rather it's about its chloride content that will reverse this process. So even if you give KCL, for example, that would still do it. However, why do we usually give NaCl or saline? Because in addition to providing the chloride, it will expand plasma volume as those patients are usually hypovolemic. So it will restore volume and chloride. Restoring volume will reverse the hyperaldosterogenic state or the state of a lot of aldosterone because of RAS activation and will therefore also get rid of the alkalosis that's mediated by aldosterone. So it helps both ways. It's a two-in-one thing. And so the best answer here, guys, would be what's the most likely cause this patient's condition? That is self-induced vomiting because she's been losing a lot of HCL. Chloride depletion led to alkalosis. You're unable to get rid of bicarb. And at the same time, vomiting led to loss of volume which led to activation of the renin angiotensin system with increased aldosterone and secretion, increased secretion of hydrogen ions. We're getting rid of a lot of acid and we can't reabsorb the bicarb. Plus, aldosterone also retains sodium and that's why she had low urine sodium. So that explains everything. Now, why isn't it diarrhea, for instance? Diarrhea, guys, gets rid of bicarb in the uh, GI tract, so that causes acidosis rather than alkalosis. That's not the case here. Um, and it actually causes metabolic acidosis, so we're expecting a low bicarbonate in serum instead of a high one as seen here. Hypoventilation also leads to acidosis due to carbon dioxide retention, and that's a respiratory rather than a metabolic acidosis. Primary hyperaldosteronism, that is what I was gonna tell you guys. And that's the other arm of the equation. So the first step we do is determine this is metabolic alkalosis by pH being high, by carb being high. The next step is urine chloride. Now, if you find that the urine chloride is actually high, it means this patient will not respond to any form of chloride repletion. It's already high in blood. And so the cause of alkalosis here has proven to be unrelated to chloride. This patient is having something that's always allowing a lot of bicarb in or a lot of hydrogen out of the body. That's a form of alkalosis that's mediated by something that has nothing to do with this chloride exchanger we talked about. And that thing is either of two. Now, if you find that the patient's volume status is hypervolemic, a hypervolemic state, or it's not a volume depleted state, the patient is euvolemic even, with high urine chloride or normal urine chloride, that is a state of excessive mineralocorticoids because that is a state of extra aldosterone. Because we know, guys, that in the principal cell of the renal tubule, we have a channel that gets rid of potassium and another one that gets rid of hydrogen ions in exchange for sodium reabsorption. And that's exactly the action of aldosterone. So when I have a lot of aldosterone for any reason, I'm going to reabsorb so much sodium and water to replete the body of volume. 
and I'm gonna get rid of so much hydrogen in urine and that's gonna lead to alkalosis because in exchange for this hydrogen we have the carbonic acid being formed here and bicarbonate get, getting absorbed as well and so that's a case of metabolic alkalosis that is not because of chloride depletion now you can see here that when we have such a state of so much bicarbonate in plasma what's going to happen to this channel you think when you have so much bicarbonate here and so much bicarbonate here what's going to happen is that this channel will work more than it should it will work more than it should in an attempt to get rid of this bicarbonate in urine so when it works a lot more than it should more than normal conditions to get rid of all this bicarbonate what's going to happen is that more chloride will get absorbed into the blood and when more chloride gets absorbed into the blood you have more of it it's a hyperchloremic state more will be filtered out in urine as well and so that is characterized by high urine chloride for that reason and so states where there is hyperaldosteronism prime, whether primary or because of Cushing disease or because of ectopic ACTH or any form of increased aldosterone that is a state where metabolic alkalosis is associated with high urine chloride and a normal volume or hypervolemic state. Now there is another cause of metabolic alkalosis with normal urine chloride or even high urine chloride that is also not because of volume depletion and that is similar to diuretic use called barter syndrome similar to loop diuretic use and Gittleman, similar to thiazide diuretic use. These conditions cannot, this is a patient who has something wrong with their tubules in that it cannot absorb chloride. And so it keeps wasting it. It's a chloride wasting state. So no matter how much chloride I give, the patient will not respond, right? Barter, that's double T for double O, like loop diuretic use, acting at the same channel where loop diuretics act, and Gittleman is like thiazide use, acting on the same channel that thiazide acts upon. Both conditions lead to wasting of chloride, and because chloride is wasted, I don't have enough chloride to activate this channel, therefore, or because actually because I have a lot of chloride in urine to activate this channel therefore we're getting rid of so much bicarbonate or because it's a excuse me guys it's a chloride depleted state I don't have enough chloride for this channel to operate and so I'm unable to get rid of bicarbonate and so I have an alkalosis all right guys I hope this video helped. Let me know what you think. 